Hi everybody, welcome to the Mississauga Library. My name is Suzanne and today we're going to be doing a class visit for grades two and three. If you're not in grades two and three, of course you're welcome to watch this video, but it is actually uh, designed and created for grades two to three. So welcome, and I know we can't be in person today uh, to do our class visit like we normally would, but we're gonna make it as best we can virtually for you. So uh, we're going to have a fun day and uh, we're going to be doing all sorts of different things. We're going to talk a little bit about the library and what we have to offer for you and the people in your class. And we're also going to do some book talking with some amazing staff members who are super passionate about children's books. And they're going to tell you about some of their favorite books, both fiction and nonfiction. So before we get started, I thought we could do a song together. And I know it's hard because you can't really be in the room with me to show all the actions and how wonderful that you and you love the song. But we're going to do a song that I think you're going to love. And it goes like this. Okay, this one is a variation of one that you may know uh, from other places you've been in your lifetime. And it's a variation of one called the bear song. But this one is called the polar bear song. And it goes like this. I'm going to say something first and then you're going to call the same thing back to me. You'll get the hang of it as we go along. It goes like this. The other day, the other day, day I saw a bear. I saw a bear. A big white bear. A big white bear. I had to stare. I had the other day I saw a bear, a big white bear, I had to stare. He stared right back, he stared right back and, seemed to grin. and seemed to grin. His long white fangs, his long white fangs hung, to his chin. hung to his chin. He stared right back and seemed to grin. His long white fangs hung to his chin. He moved to me. He moved to me upon four paws. Upon four paws. And those four paws. And those four paws. Held six inch claws. Held six inch claws. He moved to me upon four paws. Those four paws held six inch claws. Ah! I couldn't move. I couldn't move. My feet they froze. My feet they froze. And I saw steam. And I saw steam. Shoot out his nose. I couldn't move my feet, they froze, and I saw steam shoot out his nose. But I was safe. But I was safe because I knew. Because I knew this polar bear. This polar bear was at the zoo. Was at the zoo. But I was safe because I knew this polar bear was at the zoo. Phew! Excellent. Okay, thank you, everybody. All right, so we can sit back down if you've been standing up to sing the song now. And we're just going to talk a little bit about the Mississauga Library today. So just a few things I wanted to tell you. I wanted to share some stats with you and some trivia. And I'm going to ask you a few questions to see if you know the answers to these questions, OK? Um, how many people know, this is a very difficult question, how many public libraries there are in Canada? Anybody have a guess? Hmm, what did you say over there? 5,000? No. 100? No, there's more than that. Toronto has 100, actually. Uh, let's see. Any more guesses? 3,000? Very good. Yep, close. Well, actually, in Canada right now, as, as of maybe a year or so ago, there are 9,057 public libraries in all of Canada. And do you think there are more libraries or McDonald's or McDonald's or Tim Hortons or Starbucks? Which one? You guys have any guesses? Starbucks? No, I don't know. McDonald's, yeah, there's a lot of McDonald's, yeah. But right now in Canada, there are 4,286 Tim Hortons, there are 1,478 McDonald's, and Starbucks, there's only 1,175. So even combined, McDonald's, Starbucks, and Tim Hortons, that total only comes to 6,939. So right there, you find out there are more public libraries in Canada than all three of those massive chain restaurants put together. And do you know why there are so many libraries in, in Canada and in any country, really? Because if you think about it, in any small town that you go to, there would very likely be a public library, even if it was a teeny tiny public library that was inside one small room or in the back of a a schoolhouse or in the back of a church or something like that. There's always a public library in every town. But there's not always a McDonald's or a Starbucks or a Tim Hortons. 
right? So public libraries are very important places in all of the communities that they serve, whether they're huge communities like Mississauga, where we have a population of pretty much 800,000 people, or they serve a teeny tiny town like in northern and rural Ontario, where there may only be like 150 people in the town, they'd still have a library, right? So those are some pretty cool stats. Now I'm going to ask you a few stats about and trivia about the Mississauga Library in particular. How many branches do you think we have in the Mississauga Library? Any guesses? Let's see. Uh, 12? No, a little more than that. Yep. 15? Close. Yep. We actually have 18 libraries in Mississauga. And so wherever you live in Mississauga, you can always find a library pretty close by. So check it out. You'll be, you'll be surprised at how many beautiful libraries we have in Mississauga. In fact, a couple of them have even won awards for their architectural designs in the past few years. So you might want to go around and take a look at some of the libraries, even just from the outside if you can't go in. Okay, so another interesting fact. Um, how do you access things in the library? What do you need? Do you need a credit card? No. Do you need your parents' wallet? No. Well, that could help too. No, the best thing you need is your own library card. And does anybody know how old you have to be to get your own library card? Any guesses? Three, five, 12, 18? No, not 18. Actually, you can be one day old. Even babies, we promote library cards. So babies, your younger baby sister or your little cousins who were just born, we always promote to parents to get their child's first library card as soon as possible to instill a love of reading at the very earliest stage possible. So yeah, all of you can get your own library card. Some of you may already have one, which I hope so, but if not, go on over to your, your local public library and you can get yourself a library card today. Just bring your parent with you and make sure they have some ID to show where you live and whatnot. So yeah, get your own library card. Then, once you have your own library card, it opens up all sorts of doors and windows to uh, different materials and resources that you can get your hands on. And if you don't want to go in person to the library, you can use your library card to access materials online. So those are things like books, ebooks, um, different types of uh, resources that we have. We have music, we have videos, we have um, online access to databases and educational resources. So check it out. You can use your library card for all sorts of different things at the library. Uh, also in person we have tons of things so right now we've opened back up our doors in Mississauga so make sure you go into your library and check out all the different materials that you can check out with your library card. Okay another uh, little question I want to ask you is how long can you keep your library materials out if you have physical items? Anybody know? Five days? Oh that's too short I can never read a book in five days. Seven days? Oh still too short what if I'm not done? Well you can actually keep your books out for a three week period. So after you check them out, you get a little slip of paper or online, you can see when your due date is. It's usually three weeks for most items. We do have some items, however, that are seven days, but don't forget, if you're not finished with your materials, you can always renew them. And that means that you can go back onto your account online and you can uh, see if that item is available. If there are no other people waiting for it, no holds on it, then you're welcome to renew your item. And you can renew it up to five times per item. So let me think, five times three weeks, how many weeks could I actually keep an item out for then? <gasps> 15 weeks? I can certainly read a very thick novel in 15 weeks if that's the case, right? Now, they're not always available again, but it's certainly worth a shot if you really love an item or you can simply put the item on hold and you can get it back again once the other person in front of you has had it. So those are some great tips for uh, using the library. Uh, we also have tons of other fun and interactive uh, programs and services that you can take a look at on our website. So make sure you check, check out mississaugalibrary.ca and you'll see a list of all of our virtual children's programs, our teen programs, maker, robotics, coding. We have everything, something for everybody for sure. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to head over and see a couple of my amazing friends and colleagues, and they're gonna to talk to you about some of their favorite books for grades two and three. So, I'll see you at the end of uh, the book talks. Have fun, everybody. Hi, I'm Allison from the Mississauga Library, and the book that I wanna tell you about today is called Finding Winnie, the true story of the world's most famous bear. The author is Lindsay Maddock, and it's illustrated by Sophie Blackall. 
I'm sure all of you know who Winnie the Pooh is, but I bet a lot of you don't know that the character is based on a real bear from right here in Canada. This book tells the story of Harry Colburn, who was a veterinarian on his way to England to tend horses in World War I in 1914. He was on a train from Winnipeg when the train stopped at a small station, and Harry saw a man with a baby bear cub. He thought there was something very special about the bear, so he bought her for $20 which was a lot of money in those days. Finding Winnie tells the story of a special friendship between Winnie and Harry. You'll find out how Winnie ended up at the London Zoo and how there she met a very special boy named Christopher Robin and how they became the best of friends. There are some real photographs at the back of the book, as well as some of Harry Colburn's items from during the war, including his diary from 1914, from August 24th, 1914, where he wrote, on train all day, bought bear, $20. You won't be disappointed reading this true tale of a bear called Winnie. Happy reading. Hi everybody, my name's Emily and I'm here with the Mississauga Library to tell you about one of my favorite book series, Eerie Elementary. And these books are by Jack Chabert and Sam Ricks. So the hero of our book, Sam Graves, it's his first day at as a hall monitor. And he's really excited. He's excited to help kids find their locker. He's excited to tell kids to stop running in the hall. But what he did not expect was that the creepy janitor is going to tell him that his school is alive, actually alive, and not just alive, the school is evil and is trying to ruin various school events. And it is Sam's job as a hall monitor to stop this from happening. So Sam realizes he can't do this alone and he has to stop the school from eating the lead of their school play before it is ruined. And things don't stay normal for very long at Erie Elementary. So there's a whole series of books where the school tries to sabotage school events. For instance, there is a giant creepy jungle that grows on the school playground and almost ruins recess forever. There is a volcano that is going to explode at the school science fair and ruin everybody's project. And there is an ice storm that happens not outside the school, but inside the school that Sam and his friends have to stop. Eerie Elementary is amazing. It's full of adventure, it's full of action, it's full of amazing drawings, friendship, and some really scary stuff. So if you are a fan of the Goosebumps series, Dan Gutman's My Weird School series, or the Haunted Canada series, or just anything involving spooks and scares, I would recommend Eerie Elementary. And even if you're not a big fan of uh, scary things, I'm a big scaredy cat and I can enjoy these for their action and adventure. So I hope you're interested in picking up Eerie Elementary. We've got so many copies available at every single Mississauga Library location. Have a great day. Hi, I'm Diane, and I'd like to tell you about the book, The Trouble with Chickens by Doreen Cronin, illustrated by Kevin Cornell. This book will take you back to old style detectives. J.J. Tully is a retired search and rescue dog, ready to live the quiet life in the country with his trainer, Barb. After seven years spent doing heroic deeds, there wasn't too much that Tully couldn't do until he met Millicent or Mooge. It was a hot and sunny day when I met that crazy chicken. So hot that sometimes I think the whole thing may have been a mirage. But mirages don't have chicken breath, mister. She was a short, tired looking bird with a funny red comb on her head. It looked about as useful to her as a spoon is to a snake. Her eyes were tiny and black and set so close to each other that they practically touched. I'd be surprised if the right eye could report back seeing anything other than the left eye. Chickens make me nervous. Can't keep them quiet. We stared at each other for an awkward moment. I nodded to tell her to move on. She picked up her left foot carefully, not sure whether she should back out of my sweltering doghouse. As her foot hung in midair, she lowered her pointy white head and very deliberately said, nothing. A phone rang, a car backfired, a blender roared and that crazy chicken didn't blink. She was one tough bird. 
And with that, and a cheeseburger for a reward, J.J. Tully finds himself hired to solve the mystery of Muja's two missing chicks. The clues or smells have been washed away by a storm, and just when things seem hopeless, a note is found. What does the note say? And what do these words behoove, rendezvous, and twilight have to do with the case? What does RHBWR mean? And who is responsible for the missing chicks? And why were they taken? And will JJ Tully ever be able to live the quiet life in the country, chicken free? If you want the answers to these questions and more, you'll have to read The Trouble with Chickens by Doreen Cronin. Hi everyone, I'm Moira from the Mississauga Library and I'm here with a book recommendation for you today. The book I'm recommending is called Desmond Cole, Ghost Patrol, The Haunted House Next Door by Andres Miedoso. When Andres and his family move to Kersville, he quickly discovers that their new house is haunted. Andres, who is terrified of absolutely everything, is not equipped to handle this problem. Luckily, he soon meets the boy next door and discovers that Desmond Cole is the town's best resource for handling all things supernatural. Ghost, vampires, monsters, you name it. Andres isn't quite sure what to make of Desmond. Andres likes things normal and boring, and Desmond is, well, Desmond's a little weird. This is the story of an unlikely friendship in a town where things are a little spookier than usual. The Desmond Cole Ghost Patrol series has 13 books in total, so if you like this one, there's plenty more. Uh, and if you're looking for a book that's a little supernatural and a little spooky, but definitely more fun than scary, then this is a great pick for you. If you read it, I would love to hear from you. Let me know what you think. Happy reading. Hey everybody, wow, weren't those amazing? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to read some of those books myself. I haven't even heard of some of those ones. So I hope that also inspired you to take a look at the library and see what sort of books you can find for yourselves. Uh, there's fiction and nonfiction. Remember, what does that mean? Fiction and nonfiction. Something I always keep in my mind, because it's actually, I don't know what librarian ever invented this. It's almost the opposite of what they should be, right? So fiction actually means fake. So I always think of those two F words together, fiction and fake, or stories, right? They're made up. Nonfiction are actually facts, true facts. So if you're doing a project on something, those are the books that you want. There are, however, some books that can trick us because they are sort of in between the two. I'll give you an example. A book called, hmm, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. That one is found in the nonfiction section, but it's called Stories. So are these stories true or are they fake? Hmm, I'll leave that up to you. There are a number of other books in our collection that fall into that same category of a gray area, and those are really fun to find. So ask the librarian or ask someone working at a library when you go in next time to help you find some books that are in the nonfiction section, but could actually be fiction. That's my challenge to you. Okay, everybody, I hope you really enjoyed today's book talks and your class visit. And I do hope to see everybody, and we all hope to see all of you in person to do your next class visit next year. So have a great day, take care, be well, stay safe. Bye.